Mulimo Maruhanye, aka Mo. <laughs> Don't do that, aka Chup Chup. Correct me, rather. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mulimo Maruhanye, the real black G. The real black G. Yes, I'm here with one of the most and one of the most talented and most beautiful women in the game right now. Stop it. So if I never send a shout out to you, please don't get it twisted. <laughs> I was watching your chat with Slicker and you were complaining about fashion, right? Mm. Have you caught up now? He was saying guys are out here wearing skirts now, guys are out here wearing skinny jeans and tights and stuff like that. What's wrong with that? Let people be free. Look, you gotta make up your mind whether you're a guy, you're a girl, or you're gay. You can't be all three, you know? <laughs> you gotta make up your mind. For me, I respect the fashion is fine. I just don't see myself wearing skinny jeans. All right. Mangin tangin dot, the finishing club. You, you mentioned that since you've come out, you've grown much closer to your family, you understand life and family and their importance. Mm. I, I don't know if I'm misinformed, but it's almost as if you guys weren't very close prior to that incident, or were you just not as close at the time? No, the family was very close. It's just that uh, my, sis my siblings are in corporate, and they're not in the limelight, they don't like the limelight or whatnot, and spending time away from home, I never really had time for family. And being away just made me realize that you cannot be so busy to not even have time. Mm. Wherever you are, if you need your family to be with you, fly them through, let them be with you. Whatever time you get, go through there, be with them. So for me, growing up, it was more of, if my family is not around, you know, I'm out here working. If I want to have time with friends, I'll have time with friends, but they will always last. Mm. So now with everything that I've learned, my family comes first now. You don't show your eyes. So what are you so afraid of? I'm not afraid of anything. It's just, look, I've had so many people tell me, I, like, for instance, I know I'm handsome, <laughs> I know I'm good, I know I got nice eyes. People tell me the constant thing, and I'm very shy. Off stage and on, off stage, I'm a very shy person. Okay. Very, very shy. On stage is different, you know? So I don't like it when people really stare at me. I'd rather look at them, you know? That, that's just it. I'm a very shy person. Well, let's see if you decide to show us a bit of your, bit of your soul during okay, this let's interview. let's do that. Oh, wow! <laughs> Yay! Now he's right looking now. down, hiding under okay. this. But let's see those eyes. Mm. Come on, do you want to just get a nice close-up? Wow, well, man, stop. <laughs> okay. Winning. Mm. I'm excited. I'm mm. so excited. It's the first time I'm seeing his eyes, by the way, since <laughs> I got here. And the people who left you, mm. people who deserted you, mm. that must have been painful. Do you still harbor any sort of resentment? Have you made any amends? Do you want to make amends? Not really. I don't harbor any resentment because my circle died when the moment the judge said 25 to life, that's when my circle died. That's when people that were close to me, they disappeared from me. And I wasn't hurt, I was really surprised because I was like, B, I dressed you, you know? I got you a job, you know? I would feed you, you would sleep on a mattress in my house or blow up bed, you know? And today, because I'm facing my challenges, you ditch me just like that, which is fine, you know? That made me stronger as well. That made me, you know what? I was forced to be a man quicker than I was. Mm. I had everything so easy and I grew up, everything was so easy and everything dished out for me. But I was really, I was really surprised, but at the same time, I'm grateful for it. And, uh... I hope for his response right now. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to talk about that. You had enough time to think about it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I just, no, I just don't want to um, step on wrong toes. I, Who's, whose toes? Everybody. I just, I, for me, I put myself in their shoes, the families. Okay? You remember what you asked me, right? I remember what I asked you, and I know those answers, so I'll let you finish so people can answer. He doesn't want to upset them, Yeah, I just, I just, I just, um, it's too sensitive, man, for me. It's, you know. But have you asked them what they want? I did, and what I asked them stays between me and them. I would never bring it out, because they're going to say the next thing, what we talk about, do you understand? Um, they're not like us. They're just people who are very private. So you don't want them to be exposed to the media and be chased by the media, wanting, hunting them for information about besides that, everything. Whatever, yeah, but besides that, whatever I discuss with them remains between me and them. And how do you know they won't go out and never talk about it? 
because they'll never do that. They've never done that. Everything that came up before from the media, it was just the media poking. You know how the media pokes. They will poke bati, bati, bati. And they don't have the power to pick up and say, listen, stop lying and saying this because we never said that. They don't want to see media. They don't talk to media. When media steps up at the gate, Baba telling Amanza Shisai. How do you think you would have reacted to that incident had you been the parent? I would have reacted the same way that they reacted, and I most probably would have reacted worse. I almost missed something very important uh, because we started to talk about music, and your music is, very, is a very exciting topic for me. Um, kids, so you have a beautiful son who looks exactly like you. Mm. <laughs> um, and we know that there's... I came right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, we know that the, your son's mother is, is, is something that's a no-go area for you. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not discussing it, so you can respect also my interviewing skills, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, however, do want to ask this. Um, you say that you haven't seen your son because you haven't... One of the interviews, you said, because you haven't healed enough, you need to be ready and strong enough for that, etc. In another interview, you say, no, um, you know, my son gets strength from me, my family gets strength from me, you mention other people, yet you haven't seen him. Mm. And then I go through your Instagram, which I did in great detail, mm. and I see you with other kids. Mm. So my question as a mom, not as a, not just as a fan, not just as a colleague, mm -hmm. as a mother. I was like, hmm, it's interesting. He says this about he hasn't seen his son because of this, yet he is able to spend time with other people's children doing charity work. Jupe Kiss looks great. The work we did with the bread company, I don't mm -hmm. know if I'm allowed to mention their name, mm -hmm. was great. Uh, your motivational talks, all of that. Mm -hmm. How come you're able to give to all those other kids and... Um... I love Christian very much. Um, every day I long to see him. And amongst other things, he was also something that kept me going strong inside. And I, I can't imagine what he was going through, um, you know, with other kids in school and stuff, what they were saying to him. Um, I guess one day I'll have an opportunity to talk to him about that and let him know a couple of things. But I guess I'm still in a healing process. But you know, you can never be 100% to say that you're ready for Mdwana. You can never say you're 100% to say that you're ready to sit in Mdwana, whatever. When you have to, you have to. And I want to. I long every day wanted to do that. Um, unfortunately, uh, and you know, I, I just really want to put this out there that Whoever has a kid, when you have a child, no matter what beef you have, the kid should not be put in the middle. It's not fair on the kid at all, no matter what. And it is unfortunate. I mean, I come from a court battle. I come from jail. I must come out and I must go to court to fight for my kid, you know? And somebody that I was there when he was born, you know, somebody that I was there through at least for the first two years, you know? And now because I went to jail, or I went through whatever, now the mother feels that I cannot see my son. So I'm still healing, but that does not mean that I don't want to see my son. I want to see my son every day. I still want to see him now. And the mother just won't allow me. So I guess now I have to put my child through what I went through, which is court and that's not fair. And I just feel that, you know, God will make it happen when it's right. You know, even the time that I've missed out and spending time with them, it'll always be made up. If he ran in here right now? Mm. It would break me. What would be the first it would thing kill me. You know, I still, I still wish that, you know, if I had to run into a mall and I saw him, I wouldn't care about the mother, I wouldn't care about who's there or whatever. I would just run for him and just grab him, you know, and just hug him like never before. I've always had a dream and I've always had a wish, you know, that today if I'm, if I'm here dressed like this, my mini-me would be dressed like this too, you know? If I'm dressed in a certain way, he'll be dressed in a certain way. You understand what I'm saying? So 
There's things that I want for him that I cannot put out there. Catch up on Mzansi's most scandalous tell-all with your favorite celebrities. Behind the Story, Seasons 1 and 2, on Thursday the 18th of April at quarter past three. Leading up to the premiere of a new Ripped from the Headlines season on the 15th of May. Can